Mr Chair, the Whatcom County Finance and Administrative Services Committee met today and we considered items 1 through 13, but we held in committee item 7. So I am recommending for approval items 1 through 6 and then 8 through 13. This was, these were all uh, recommended by the committee with a vote of 3-0 for approval, and I so move. All right, so the motions to approve items 1 through 6 and 8 through 13. Any discussion on any of those? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Those pass unanimously. Mr. Chair, the next item was an ordinance amending the 2015 Watkin County Budget 10th request in the amount of $165,635. This was also considered by the committee with a vote of 3-0, and I so move. All right, we have the motion for that ordinance in front of us. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready for the roll call. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Paul Sadu? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. That passes unanimously. Mr. Chair, the next item in this, in this case we are acting as the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors was a resolution amending the 2015 Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Budget, fourth request in the amount of $340,000. This was also uh, recommended with a vote of 3-0, and I so move. All right, we have that motion in front of us. Any discussion? Okay, with our Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors hats on, we're ready for the roll call. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Satpal Sadu? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. That passes unanimously. The next uh, had no committee assignment, but it's a resolution requesting the county executive continue to negotiate with the city of Bellingham on a new long-term jail facility use agreement while the voters consider ballot proposition number one of the jail facility sales and use tax. Um, and we're working off of the salmon colored uh, version we have in our packet just because of a Scribner's error. Oh, okay. So what are the wishes of the council? Mr. Brown, you, you brought these forward. So uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. I propose this and I would like, I would move that we adopt this resolution. All right. There's a motion to adopt. Is there a second? I second that. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Mann. I am not going to support this, and I hope I can persuade three other people up here not to support it. I think, obviously, I've been against this particular jail project uh, for a while now since we got a clearer idea of the um, financial implications and the size and everything. In addition to that now, you know, we voted to put it on the ballot. I, I, could, I, I, I understand why folks felt like, all right, fine, just let the, let the voters decide. Now this is coming along and it, we don't have an agreement with Bellingham. The wheels have sort of fallen off this whole uh, project at this point in time through nobody's fault. That's just the way it is. We couldn't reach agreement with Bellingham and there's a lot of moving parts. I do not think we should be voting in favor of anything regarding that facility use agreement because it's going to make it sound like we support it uh, or we support the project and I don't and I, I hope the majority of you don't support this project so I, I'd recommend we vote no on this and not send any kind of a message that we're, uh, we're happy with, with the direction things are going and that the, the final agreement is, is likely to be uh, in the interest of the people of Whatcom County. Mr. Ms. Brenner. Well, I do support the project and I, since you opened that door, um, what I support most of all about the project is our the items that are very, there's little discussion about, and that is um, the much bigger space and services for people with mental illness, substance abuse, to get people their, uh, you know, their GED, to help train people to work. That gets so little conversation, and that is definitely one of the pieces that makes this 
more expensive than it would be without it. And other than that, it seems like, you know, the amounts are fairly similar to other jurisdictions. I think, you know, I applaud the county executive for continuing to work with the city, and I hope they can come to a, um, some kind of a, an agreement that will work. But, so I don't want him to give up. But I think it's an important thing to do, and, and I thank him for continuing to do this. Mr. Brown. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. So uh, the, the purpose of this is really to try and break the logjam in the negotiations, and, it's, it's, and by that I mean I, I respect that the City of Bellingham and, and members of the community, including Mr. Mann, have concerns about the uh, size and the character of the jail that's being proposed. Uh, I think it's fair to say that there are still unanswered questions, and the biggest one, of course, is going to be uh, the questions that are raised by the Incarceration and Prevention Task Force, and they're not going to give us the results of the deliberations until uh, the first phase will be in March of next year, and the final report won't be until about March of the following year. I, really, the purpose of this was to say, look, we all agree there are some, some significant motivators for us not the least of which is I think there's universal agreement that the jail, current jail needs to be replaced. And I, I think even you would agree with that, wouldn't you, Mr. Mayor? Absolutely. Right. So, but the problem is, is that the issues about the size of the jail, um, the, uh, the funding mechanism between the cities, we're not, simply not going to get that resolved between now and, the, and when the ballot proposition is decided. And the point is here to simply acknowledge where we agree, acknowledge where we, we still have work to do, and to acknowledge that we're not going to get this done before the ballot initiative um, passes. So let's move ahead and secure the funding to do both the jail, the, the jail replacement and the other programs we want to do as well, because if we don't get the funding, all the rest of it is a mute point. So this is not approval of the, of, of say, the county executive's view of the jail or the sheriff's view of the jail or, um, uh, you know, uh, those who have, uh, are, are very satisfied with the existing proposition. This is silent on whether we should go with those propositions. It's just saying, let's move forward and get the funding and continue working on the agreement. Mr. Mann. And I appreciate that perspective as well. I would, I am not comfortable going to the people and saying, "We yes, we want a, a very sizable tax increase. We want you to vote in favor of a tax increase that we haven't even figured out exactly how it's going to be spent or how it's going to be apportioned." To me, that that is it's not, uh, that that's that doesn't send a great message, in my opinion. Anyone else? Mr. Sadu. I think one of the... <clears throat> one of the point has been that since August, when we decided to put it on the ballot, if we had stopped negotiations, there were many things uh, which we would have never known. I think continuing talking between the executive and the mayor has brought many things in, into light. I think there were very nebulous type of uh, innuendos or whatever you want to call them, but it has brought to the point that now there are some pinpointed issues that city has put forward. I'm not saying we agree with them or disagree with them, and I think that this process does is, is, is continues on that pathway, and uh, we are finding more points of agreement and points of disagreement. If we stop that, we won't know those. And if this does pass, which we don't know how the voters are going to do, and uh, then we have some place to start with uh, from there on. Mr. Brown? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Mann and, and perhaps the rest of the Council, if I can just bring your attention to this resolution, which is a separate one, which I'm hoping to introduce tonight as well, but not ask you to vote on tonight. Uh, it is the second, it's the next step 
to this document, which is to try and um, provide, to develop some models that will help us establish the answers to the key questions, such as the jail size, such as the um, financing model, such as the question about what is the current utilization between the different parties. I think the part of the reason we've struggled in answering these questions is that we've, it's, we haven't had common tools, at least not the tools that I would have expected to see with parties on a deal this size and this complex. So what I've asked for in the second resolution to be introduced tonight is that the county and the city work together, um, led by the county's efforts, to come up with some models to answer these questions and make those models available to the citizens and include in that the ability for the citizens and the city and the county council, city councils and the county councils, to try some what-if scenarios. What if we do an incarceration prevention program and it results in a 10% drop in utilization? What if we um, uh, go through and are successful in getting the state legislature to change the, the sentencing guidelines on some of these things? I think that then drives us to a good answer as to what the right size of the jail should be. I think the financial model will be, uh, those discussions will be better if the, uh, for example, the city of Bellingham, when they propose something to us, can see for themselves how that affects our finances and vice versa. So I, I'm respectful of the point you brought up, Mr. Mann, and I think the next document that I'm introducing tonight will move that ball forward as well. Ms. Brenner. Well, I have a little bit different take on it. Um, for example, I think the state could come down with tougher sanctions on certain types of activity, like drunk driving. Um, the more I learn about the victims of people who hit people with their cars while they're driving drunk, the more I realize you get in a car drunk, you are actually operating a loaded weapon. And it really does bother me that it's a misdemeanor unless you hit somebody and kill them or hurt them. And, and I think there's plenty of ways to look at this stuff, but um, those are going to be for people who are much more astute than I am about it. I do think that the whole purpose of this new jail is to create something that's extremely different um, from many other types of jails that have ever been, and especially with the focus. There's such a large focus of it on preventing recidivism when people get into the jail process and giving people tools to be able to make better choices in the future. Uh, I don't agree that this is something that if the people pass it, we don't know what we're doing. I think that is completely inaccurate. I think if we pass this, we will still be working on refining how we get to completion. And to me, it's, it's been a moving, you know, kind of a moving process all along. I don't see that people, agreeing that we need a new humane jail and this is what we're talking about is, and they've done a lot of that, what, uh, what was mentioned, a lot of that work has been done by experts. Maybe some people don't agree with those experts. Um, I'm not, you know, a, a money person and I do have a, a lot of concerns about spending it wisely, but if I, you know, the longer we wait, I do agree that waiting more time makes it more expensive, but I just want to see that final product that is going to provide people with so many alternatives. And I did talk to the executive, and I think I talked to Tyler about it. If we ever have any extra room, we can use it for social services and other things that we keep claiming we are so focused on. So. I'm not worried about what we would do with the space. I would love to see us have space that isn't being used so that we can use it for more restorative types of um, justice propositions. But I think this is an, an incredibly uh, forward-thinking type of project. So, Mr. Brown and then Mr. Mann. I'll, I'll defer to Mr. Mann first. Ms. Brenner, you know I love you. <laughs> and I love you too, but okay, we don't have to good. agree. 
You will not vote to approve the sale of a, of a surplus lawnmower without inspecting it yourself. That's not true. All right, practically. Talk you, about exaggeration. Okay, you want to see the maintenance records and the mileage of, of, of a, you know, of a 20-year-old truck before we sell it. And now what you're telling me is that it's okay to vote, to to say yes, you know, this seven million dollar tax, this hundred million dollar proposal, is is close enough, and uh, we don't know if Bellingham's going to be a member. We don't know if it's going to be five hundred and twenty beds. We don't know if it's going to be four hundred beds. I'm having a very hard time squaring those two arguments that that you're making. Second of all, I also really appreciate Mr. Brown's request for spreadsheets and and. Uh, alternatives and measurements so we actually know what we're doing and that's why I'm for, for for the fact that we don't have that already and the fact that we don't know if Bellingham is going to be a member I am not comfortable going to the voters and saying tax yourselves this this huge amount of money so we can build this huge project that we don't know exactly how big it'll be or how much it's going to cost it's just so contrary to what we say we believe in as responsible stewards of the public finances. So that, that's where I'm coming down on. Ms. Brenner. Yeah, I, well, first of all, you should have seen back when there was the renovation of the courthouse. That was so lucrative and went all over the place and um, didn't end up with what we said we wanted. I've taken the time not only to meet with the sheriff, the uh, consultants, the executive's office, that I am convinced in the, in the purpose and what we're doing. I don't believe that there's anything in the, in the uh, proposal on the ballot that would prevent us from making changes and do, doing whatever we need to do to make it work. So I'm not worried about that. Yeah, when you have simple small little things um, that are easy. To, if somebody would give me just simple information, I wouldn't have had to ask those questions, like the trucks and all that other stuff. But it was not like what you said, and they're, they're like apples and oranges. So no, they're, I, they're like hundreds of millions. You know what? Sorry. I'm still talking. You're right. I apologize. My bad. Well, I'm, I should feel like I should keep talking till this thing gets done so you don't keep coming back at me. I don't want you to... I'll stop. I, okay, and I don't want to argue with you. I'll I have stop. a different opinion, way different than you do. But you say yours in a way that is just like, it's so disparaging, a personally disparaging thing about what we're doing. I just don't feel that way. I feel completely different than you do about it. So, okay? Okay. Mr. Brown. So I think it's also um, perhaps useful to remember that whatever happens in terms of the, the, well, sorry, if the ballot initiative is passed and we have a source of funding for this, the uh, county executive has, has clearly brought his vision of, of what he wants the jail to look like. But the ultimate decision as to what that is and the letting of the contracts for construction is still in our hands. And the jail doesn't get built until the council is satisfied that it is meeting the needs of the community and reflects the community's values. So the, the passing of the ballot initiative is not locking in the decision about what the jail is going to look like, what our incarceration prevention programs are going to look like. We still have complete control over that through the budget process. All right, so we have the motion for this, uh, whatever it is, uh, resolution in front of us. Any other discussion? No. Ms. Brenner. I just have to say this one thing. Just remember what uh, Councilmember Brown just said when it comes to the discussion about changing our policies. All right. I will say no more. I haven't said anything, so I just want to say that I am going to support the resolution, although I have some problems with the resolution because the resolution talks about the county and the city of Bellingham continue to negotiate, and we already have a signed agreement with the small cities 
So we have to include those folks in the negotiation too, but I'm voting in favor of this because I think whether it, the ballot measure passes or not, we need to send a clear signal to the city of Bellingham that we've heard their concerns and that we want to keep talking with them because there's a sense over there that they were given an issue, take it or leave it, and we haven't been willing to negotiate. So I think this resolution at least sends a signal to the city that we are willing to negotiate their concerns whether it's before or after, whether it passes or not at the ballot. Ms. Brenner. You know, just to add on to that, we even voted to meet with the city, council to council. They didn't want to do it. So I don't, you know, I don't know where they're getting that, that opinion. All right. We have the resolution in front of us. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right. That passes six to one with Mr. Mann opposed. Um, consideration of an appointment to fill the council's legislative analyst position. We have been going through a process for the last couple of months uh, to hire, to rehire, I guess, a council analyst. We had this position a number of years ago and it's been vacant since then. Uh, we interviewed a number of people and this evening we are ready to consider an appointment. What is the uh, wishes of the council? I move we appoint. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, point to anybody. Second. All right. And the person uh, that we are appointing is Forrest Longman, who's actually sitting in the audience. If you want to raise your hand, people will. Uh, um, the potential new council analyst. Any other discussion on this? I think we've all met him and seen his qualifications. Ms. Brenner. Well, it's no secret I have been completely opposed to the position. But I've spoken to Forrest, and I have to say, although I'm opposed to the position, I'm very much in support of the person. Um, I think he's extremely qualified, and I definitely didn't softball anything when I talked to him. So he, he survived, and um, I'm going to support him. All right. So it's been moved and seconded. Mr. Brown. Uh, I would just like to amend the motion that we are uh, uh, voting to appoint Forrest Long. Good. Good. Right. With his name in it. So okay. That yes. Yes. That's a good idea. Yeah. I move we appoint Forrest Longman to the council's legislative analyst position. Thank you for the clarification. All right. So that's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Yay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Or condolences now I that you've sat through a council meeting. <laughs> uh, other council appointments. Uh, we have a nomination and appointment to fill vacancies on the Wildlife Advisory Committee for various positions. I think we have seven people who have uh, applied. We have 11 positions open. Um, I just wanted to point out that one of the gentlemen who applied, Greg Dunphy, actually put on his application that he wanted to be an alternate. And I don't know what that means because there aren't alternates for this committee. Um, so we can appoint him or consider that however did we reach out to him and ask him what he was thinking okay um, so what are the wishes of the council mr. Brown well mr. chair I understand that we're, we're expecting other applications um, and while there are 11 positions four of those are not intended to be f f uh, filled immediately and I'd actually recommend that we hold this for a couple of weeks and wait until those other applications can come in and <coughs> then consider all of them together so that a motion second That's a motion, yeah. Okay, the motion has been moved and seconded to hold this uh, till our next meeting. Correct. All right. Um, with hopes that more applications, which we hear, may come in. Mr. Mann. Yeah, so we actually do think there are more applications mm -hmm. coming in. That's my understanding. Okay, we've heard that through various channels. Okay. Yep. Mr. Buchanan. Have we made, will we make that aware then in the deadline and somehow advertise that, that the deadline's been ex extended then, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yep. So that it would be extended for one week from today, correct? Yeah. 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 So okay. next Tuesday would be the new deadline. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor of holding this for two weeks? Say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Uh, appointments. Request confirmation of the county executive's appointment of Michelle Zlatek to the Bellingham Whatcom County Commission Against Domestic Violence. Move approval. Second. That's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, next is a request confirmation of the county executive's appointment of 
Bojen Luo to the Northwest Senior Services Board. Move. Move. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. <coughs> Request confirmation of the county executive's appointment of Gwen Vanderhaeg to the uh, Whatcom County Library System. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. We're on to introduction items. There's none in our packet, but I think Mr. Brown has one. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So the one I handed out to you before, uh, which is starts off with the title of requesting the county executive to develop spreadsheet models to make it easier for the Watkin County Council, the City of Bellingham and other interested parties to understand the impact of the various proposals related to the new long-term jail facility use agreement. All right. Anybody? Uh, the, so that's your motion to introduce that? That's correct. Second. It's moved and seconded. Ms. Brenner. Um, I'm going to support it, but I have a problem with giving us stuff when we come into a meeting to put on for introduction or anything else because I like to read it ahead of time. So I've already spoken to Mr. Brown about that and he's aware. Um, and my apologies. Oh, no, I'm fine. I just don't usually do this, so I just wanted to say that. I'm also going to support it. I, I think the timing's a little awkward this close to the election, asking for metrics to tell us uh, what size and stuff we're about to vote on. But on the other hand, I think it'll be very valuable, you know, if the if it doesn't pass or on our ongoing negotiations with the city, so I, I support it. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Passes unanimously. Any other uh, reports from committees? There weren't other, any other committees other than finance this morning. Is there anything that to report? Was it. No. Okay. Other items of business. Oh. Mr. I Man. have a, something I'd like to bring up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, with the administration. <clears throat> this Glen Echo Garden uh, complaint that we heard tonight, I mean, I, I appreciate that you spoke to the gentleman, but it's been f four years, he said, and I know there's generally been a lack of, well, I really want to say it, actually, but uh, our enforcement has not exactly been um, thorough on some of these things. Can we actually do something or get a report? I, I, it, he says no one's even been out there to investigate his claims that the hearing examiner standards are not being met. Aside from the merits of this case, which I have never, I don't know either of these folks, I've never been out there. You know, it just kind of makes a mockery of the hearing examiner system and the quasi-judicial rulings we get. We, we need to follow up on this stuff. So are you actually going to do something yeah, to Tyler, look into it? Tyler Schroeder, County Executive's Office. Um, I know that uh, the executive has um, talked to a couple of different neighbors out in the area by email. Um, you know, this is an interesting situation where there's enforcement cases. Through those enforcement cases become permit process, which is the conditional use permit process. The hearing examiner then places conditions for a property owner to run his or her business associated with those conditions. And it, it sounds in this case, uh, according to some of the neighbors, and I'd have to do more research myself, um, that the, the property owner is now not running the business within those conditions. So there are uh, steps to take that hearing examiner um, conditional use permit back in front of the hearing examiner and have a discussion with the hearing examiner and whether or not those are being accomplished as it was outlined in the conditional use permit. I followed up with uh, Mark Personius, Assistant Director at Planning Development Services, and I'll give a, a, a report back to council on, on the exact status of the Glen Echoes um, project to council in the near future. Thanks. Um, my, only cons my only concern about that is if the hearing examiner finds a violation or doesn't find a violation, that is subject to appeal to the council. So I would caution you to not get too involved in whether or not there's a violation in this case. Mr. Kremen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, I, really this issue, I understand that the, the individual came for us during open session this evening, you know, has a, whether it's a legitimate concern or issue, 
it really, this is an ex executive branch issue. This is something that the, it's not in the realm of the legislative branch. Really, whether or not uh, there's, you know, a potential for it coming before us, I mean, that even cinches it, but we really should be kind of refraining from dealing with this. I mean, I, I know that, that the forum of the county council was used this evening for the for the individual who's somewhat disgruntled, but this really is a an executive branch issue at this juncture, anyway. Tyler Schroeder again, and that was um, my what I was trying to get across, and I was going to follow up with Councilmember Mann. I'm kind of specific to this discussion on what the status is. I, I guess I would just like to state that during our last budget uh, discussions, we put a lot of more money in for better enforcement. So maybe we should have a general discussion of how that money's been spent <coughs> and whether our enforcement opportunities are moving forward because we keep hearing stories like the one we heard this evening um, that enforcement isn't happening. So we'd like to get a well-rounded picture of that. And I think we'd be able to do that through um, Finance Committee kind of showing or maybe Planning and Development Services Committee showing the, the money that was budgeted for enforcement purposes and planning and development and how, it, how it's been accomplished. I think it shows, though, the complications of enforcement cases and how long they can go associated with projects because this one actually got a permit associated with an enforcement case. And now on the back end of it, it's trying to enforce those conditions of a land use decision. So it just shows the complication throughout that land use enforcement process. Right. We should get rid of conditional use permits then. If we, you know, they take, they're terribly expensive for folks to get, then they come with all these conditions and then we can't even enforce them Let's just get rid of them. Make, you know, either decide we like an operation or, I mean, a certain land use or not. That would be a bigger discussion, too. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that in my committee. <laughs> Mr. Brown. Uh, I don't think the, uh, I mean, the issue of a conditional use permit is to allow someone a variance from what this, the hard and fast rule is. And it uh, doesn't work. Well, it works for those who are in compliance. It, what you've got here is a person who's out of compliance. Kind of like speed limit. I mean, just to follow up, I think Councilmember Brown has a very good point. There are a number of conditional use permits out in Whatcom County in which property owners are following those conditions, and, and the executive branch doesn't hear about it, and, and the council doesn't hear about those. And those are where the property owners are following and abiding by those conditions on a more intense land use permit or, or project. So, so to jump to the conclusion that the conditional use permit may not work is, is it might go a little bit too far because there are a number of conditional use permits out in Whatcom County that we do not hear about because they abide by the conditions that are outlined by that law. So. All right. Any other other business? How about reports from council members? Start down at that end. Uh, I went uh, last weekend. I attended a one and a half day seminar on the management of small timber holdings for people who have uh, designated forest land and growing timber. Uh, it was put on by Tom Westergreen and the Washington Uni State University Extension. And it was a really interesting and excellent program. And uh, if there's any citizens out there that are doing, uh, have a small timber holding and want to know how to manage it effectively, both for the health of the forest and to maximize the yield out of it when it is time to either selectively harvest or completely harvest, I highly recommend they do it. I think they run the program twice a year. Mr. Buchanan? I think. Mr. Mann? I was at the Incarceration Prevention and Reduction Task Force meeting on Monday, and we have a very good collection of members on that task force. I'm very optimistic that we're going to – we've got all the right people in the room to – to tackle these issues and come up with even more and better strategies for, for tackling um, the, the problems that we face in our community and, and keeping people out of jail. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to, to working on that committee. And the next meeting is this coming Monday at 9 a.m. in 311 Grand Avenue, right, right upstairs. Ms. Brenner. Yep. Oh, I've been just uh, driving around the county meeting a lot of new people hearing what their issues are and totally enjoying that. Right. 
And I was supposed to be in Washington, D.C. today. I was invited to testify to a U.S. Senate Commerce Committee, but I looked at our agenda and decided it was more important to be here to vote on the delivery of fuel to the central shop than to uh, <laughs> go to D.C. and testify to Congress. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. Any, uh, anything else for the good of the order? We are adjourned.